welcome to Fine Art Makers. That's FAM, the online edition. And today we are going to talk about Georges Seurat, um, a French artist who lived from 1859 to 1891. So he passed away when he was 31, and despite being so young, he made lots and lots of beautiful paintings, and he was very influential in the style of pointillism, um, which we're going to practice today. Mr. Davies is going to make a pointillist painting. And that basically is, instead of mixing your colors on the palette, he would dot, make several dots of different colors, and your eye would see them as the colors mixing together. So they are very complex paintings that look different if you check them out really, really close or even far away. So for today, you are going to need your paint, of course, and some paper. And then the best way to make your dots is with Q-tip. So you will need all those things and take some time to get those and we'll be back when you unpause. Hello, it's me, Mr. Davey, and it's time for us to start the art side of things here. Um, like Miss Shea was saying, um, we're gonna be doing some mixing of colors. So we're gonna basically start off with our primary colors, which is our red, yellow, and blue. So these are the kind of colors that you're gonna want uh, to start with. And with these three colors, we can make any color out there. Um, so I'm gonna show you some examples. So I'm gonna grab some yellow to start with. Gonna smear some yellow up here. Then I'm going to grab some blue here, some blue. And we're just gonna mix them together. And well, I'm probably gonna need a little bit more yellow. And we start getting a green color. So our yellow and blue are making green. There we go, we got some green going on there. Then we're gonna take some red. We're about to make one of my favorite colors. And get some red here. And then we're gonna take a little bit of dab of blue. And with that, we start making a purple color. And then we're going to grab some more yellow here. Some yellow and some more yellow. And then we're going to grab a dab of red. And this way, I'm going to grab a little bit more yellow. Yellow is such a light color, sometimes you have to add a little bit more. And we get orange. So out of just those three primary colors, we get our secondary colors, green, purple, and orange. So just out of those two colors, we can make just about any color out there. Um, now today, I am also gonna be using a little bit of white and a little bit of black, um, because white you really can't mix, it just has to be white. And black, even if you took all the colors and sort of mix them up, it makes more of a muddy color than it does a black color. And if you look at uh, Surratt's paintings, you can see some blacks, you can definitely see some whites. So. Those are, like I said, you can't mix those, so we're just going to be using those colors there. So let me get my big board here. Ugh. And for some odd reason, I am in the mood to do another cat. So just like most artists, I went ahead and sketched out my cat, what I was going to paint. Um, and I think uh, Michelle is going to tell you about how many times he sort of sketched out some of his paintings in order to create um, what he does. Um, we have our Q-tips for painting. And also one thing is these paintings do take a long time to do because it's lots and lots of dots. And sometimes you have to let your, all your dots dry before you can continue doing more dots. And Mache found a really cool uh, way of sort of explaining his art with pixels. You guys know video games and computer games, TV, um, anything that comes over a streaming service like YouTube. All those things are, make up, are made up of little points of light of different colors that mix together in your, in your head to see those colors the way they want them to be shown. So these are very similar to computer pixels, TV pixels, video game pixels. So um, Michelle's gonna give you some more facts about Surah while I start painting my cat. And one thing I did notice, except for his Eiffel Tower painting, he, he does make it look real. So it's not like an abstract piece where you could like make the cat pink or blue. You could see that his animals, we got a dog there, a monkey there, another dog, 
but these people are at, they're actually the real colors. So we're gonna try to do that exact same thing um, with our painting. All right, let's talk about Mr. Seurat. So as I said, he was born in 1859 in Paris, France, um, and died in 1891, also in Paris, France. He only lived to be 31, but in that time, he became a large influence um, to even artists today with his pointillism, ways to look at light and dark colors, how closely you put the dots together, how far away you put the dots. Um, so it takes a lot of color theory and really adjusting your eyes when you look at these paintings, um, how they're done, because they look so much different up close, but as you pull away, you can see the entire image. And actually a good example of that is the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off, because Cameron, I believe, is actually looking at this painting and they keep zooming in and in and in on it and it, it changes the way your eye perceives it. Yeah, you can see um, different details that may not be as obvious, um, like such as the, uh, the people, maybe uh, their face, their nose, ears, things like that. Um, just small little dots that you may not even know are there. Um, it is all completely dots. So he grew up in Paris, France, and he was lucky enough to have wealthy parents, um, and that let him focus on his art. Uh, he was very quiet, but very smart, and kind of kept to himself when he was a child, and he attended the School of Fine Arts in Paris. Um, and they basically was able to continue to refine his art skills with actual uh, professors and got time to practice with different materials and he spent the next two years after that actually drawing in black and white um, so it's kind of he started sketching his drawings before he would do the dots um, but obviously he wouldn't sketch and have all those dots there that would take a long time um, so if you can take a look at Mr. Davey can you point at the bottom right painting there? That one right there? Yeah. That is uh, a painting called Bathers at Anier. Um, and that is when he finally set up his own art studio, which his parents uh, helped him do. He was able to paint and explore all these areas of art. And this was his first major painting. Um, and it was, you know, it's a very large painting. People relaxing near the water, as you can see. And he was very proud of this painting. And he was so proud of it that he had submitted it to the official French art exhibition, the Salon. However, they rejected it. They did not like it. It was not, you know, the way people were art, like arting, <laughs> making art at the time. Um, and so he joined something called the Society of Independent Artists. So artists that were kind of doing their own thing, breaking the mold, and he presented the art there because it was more accepted. Um, and pointillism, as I mentioned at the beginning, and what Mr. Davey is, uh, the art style that he is uh, making an example of on the board, um, he really liked that because he loved color theory. He loved mixing colors, seeing how they looked next to each other, seeing how they looked on top of each other. And instead of mixing paints on the palette, we do something like Mr. Davey showed with his example, Basically, you know, you mix on your piece of work instead of having the color done for you all there. And that creates a lot of the optical effects of how people may see the art differently from far away. And then up close, you kind of see the blue and yellow mix green when you stand far away. But if you were to get up close with these paintings, you may actually get to see the yellow detail and the blue detail separated. And so, by doing that, he um, really made a name for himself, different ways to you know, show light and shadow. Um, and now we call it pointillism. And he thought, you know, it makes the colors more brilliant and bright. Uh, as he was working, he had a um, good friend who was also a French painter. His name is Paul Signac. And he practiced the same method, to, you know, because he wanted to try it. And together they kind of, you know, were the pioneers of this art. And thanks to Paul, uh, he is the reason why we have most of the information about Seurat because he kept detailed um, journals and diaries. So it's thanks to him that we actually, you know, know a lot about his life. And now we are actually gonna talk about the top right painting. 
This is one of his most popular paintings. Many of you may have seen it before. It is called Sunday on the Island of La Grande Jatte. And it's from 1884, and this is his masterpiece. It is a huge painting. In real life, if you were to see it, it is six feet 10 tall. So it's taller than your average adult, and it is over 10 feet wide. And it is made entirely of dots of pure color layered together, spaced apart. It is absolutely amazing to behold. And it took him two years to finish this painting, and there are millions of dots on this painting, millions. And I just gotta say, just doing these few dots right now, it is already killing my arm, <laughs> um, just dotting, 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 which is sort of similar to halftone in the sense that it's lots of dots, but where halftones don't overlap each other to make the color, it enha enhances what you're doing. This is lots of dots over each other, and Right now, I'm just kind of doing the base color. So when I go back and I start adding in the other colors, it will start mixing together. So I'm really excited for you guys to actually see what this looks like when it's done um, in, the, in the comments below. Yeah, so for example, if Mr. Davey wanted to, um, when he comes back after the color's dry, which you can do it when the color's dry. It's also, if you want to try using the wet on wet paint, um, you can just make sure because it gets a little goopy. Um, but as long as you space your dots apart and try different things, you may like, you know, what you create. So imagine if Mr. Davey was going to make that left ear of the cat, he wanted to make it orange. You know, he has red on it right now, so which color would you add? Mr. Davey, what color would you add to that red to make an orange? Um, uh, if I remember my, my primary colors correctly, I would add a little bit of yellow. So when I start dotting it, and you can kind of see it, it starts making it a little bit orange. Exactly. So there are many different, you know, color combinations you can try, but obviously these make your secondary colors. Um, awesome colors. My favorite color is green. Um, so, you know, if you're making grass, something like that, which is in a lot of his paintings since they're outdoors, he would need to have a lot of blue paint and yellow paint. All right. And his work, as I said, Sunday afternoon on the island of La Grande Jatte. It was so complex and it took every morning he would come to this place. So every morning he made 60 sketches over time, not 60 sketches a day, but he would come there every morning and take a look at it and learn and see something new each time. And then after 60 sketches, he was finally satisfied with what he wanted to make. And so, um, he would return to his studio in the afternoon and he would paint until late night, almost all night at times. And he kept this painting a secret. He didn't want anyone to know about what he was doing. Um, not really sure why, it maybe just because it was something so different and radical at the time. You know, he wanted to keep it to himself and, you know, work hard on it. And that was the painting that he did over two years. And when he um, exhibited it in 1886, some people were amazed by it. They, they enjoyed seeing the colors and seeing the, you know, the overall picture in different ways. Uh, but however, most of the art critics at the time, of course, they did not like it. They didn't think it was gonna be the future of art. Um, they thought it wasn't well done, that it isn't the way you're supposed to make art, which of course, um, in my personal opinion, and Mr. Davies as well, there's no wrong way to make art. Um, the fact that he decided to use millions of dots and years of his life to make these paintings, there is definitely, there is a meaning behind that. There's hard work there. And I mean, he practiced color theory, all that. He used things he used in school, but all those things he learned, but he still, made something new out of it. I feel like all the great artists, like we've talked about, always when they first show their new works, always get like the bad critics. And then later on, it's just like, oh, we love his art. It's the greatest art in the world. So it's like, I think you're on the right path when they don't like your art at first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something people are sometimes afraid of something new, especially in paintings. They're, they're automatically critics may not like it, or maybe some do, but they're afraid to admit it. You know, there's a lot of disagreements, but over time there's more appreciation, which his paintings were appreciated at the time. 
um, unlike some of the artists that we have kind of went over in this. So, you know, that's always good. And he continued to paint in the same style, and he tried experimenting with lines, um, different, like, widths and lengths of lines using the dots um, to express things like emotions. And, you know, he actually met several uh, great artists of the time, including Vincent van Gogh and Edgar Degas. So he kind of got to, you know, meet his contemporaries at the time and also influence them as well. Yeah, because if you look at, like, the Eiffel Tower, you can definitely see how his dots change from piece to piece. These are, like, I, I would say very, very tiny dots. Mm -hmm. These are bigger. These are almost, I almost say they're almost strokes of the paintbrush more mm -hmm. than a dot. But these, again, this is like dots. So it's really, artists change, they adapt, they grow as they go on. Exactly. Um, he passed away, as I mentioned, when he was 31. So we've done several, several of these paintings that are very time, time consuming. Um, as I said, like the top painting uh, took over two years and millions of dots, if you can imagine that. And we're not exactly sure. Uh, historians are not exactly sure what he died from. It could have been pneumonia. Most people think uh, meningitis. And unfortunately, he passed away, you know, pretty young. So I imagine, just think of all the art that he could have made going on. But for in that time, he painted years and years and years and kept with those paintings. So it's excellent that we have so many examples to um, study and look at. And really, uh, Mr. Dave talked about the pixels. Um, obviously, as you can tell, he had to be a very patient person. Um, sometimes waiting on the paint, you know, to dry, being patient if the color isn't exactly how he wanted it, and obviously patience in, you know, either standing, sitting, but with, think of, think, think of Mr. Davy's painting was as tall as Mr. Davy. That alone, you know, that were some of his paintings. And then, you know, all the way across, it could be 10 feet. And with those tiny dots, you definitely takes a lot of time and stepping back from your painting. I would get a headache if I were to try something like that. This also reminds me of the Aboriginal dot painting that we did in our earlier fam. So I kind of feel like we're going, in a way, we're going back to other other fams, like the Lichtenstein with the half tone, and then the Aboriginal dot painting, which them, you know, it was dots, but all over the place. And this isn't just that sort of th that same technique, but all the dots are on top of each other to help create the illusion of, of the different colors. Exactly. Um, as you can tell, the more detailed paintings on the right uh, are much smaller dots, and they're much closer together. Whereas, as Mr. Davy showed the Eiffel Tower there, it is kind of more of an expression. There is, it's still using the dots and the um, different strokes of the paint and mixing them together, but because they are spread more apart, it's kind of got a looser look to it. So it's, it's very interesting how he did try different ways and how he understood how light and, light, light and shadow worked. Yeah. I can also see how a larger canvas would be easier to paint. Um, so uh, I'm gonna keep putting lots and lots of dots on my cat. Um, like always, we can't wait to see what you guys are going to create. So um, that's pretty much this uh, it for this episode of FAM. And don't forget, our curbside is still open, so you could check out all the different art books that we have. And i got to say, we've noticed that you guys have checked out some books on George O'Keefe when we did a George O'Keefe and a few of the other artists that we've done. So yeah, keep checking that stuff out via curbside. Um, don't forget about our online resources. And until next week, um, uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.